You're listening to Stepping Stones of Faith. I'm Pastor Josh. I would like to invite you to embark with me on a journey, a journey of biblical study. Through practical application of the Word of God, it is my prayer that you grow in greater relationship with God through His Son, Jesus Christ. Please join me as we journey to the next Stepping Stone of Faith. But we all need a secret place with God. I've been finding this office in which I am right in right now, in the home that we're staying in in South Africa, as my secret place. Sometimes I want to just leave the door open to hear what's going on outside and stuff like that, but that doesn't really get me blocked off from everything. So I find this is a secret place, and I listen to God intently in my secret place, and I pray to him intently about you, about your church, about all those that are involved in our ministry, and all the ministry that God has us to do. This is where I come. This, you folks are in my secret place today. Now, I'm not going to invite you into that secret place because that is set aside for God. The only reason why we're in this secret place because I'm closed off from everything and I don't have a lot of noise. I'm just saying, are taking care of our soul in that secret place with God is what's going to give us that strength to get through each and every day that we need to go out into this world and, and let them hear about Jesus. You know, uh, also one more thing, and I'll just let, I'll give it back over to you, brother, is he actually talks about the tabernacle. He says in verse six, and now my head shall be lifted up above my enemies all around me. Therefore, I will offer sacrifices of joy in his tabernacle. I will sing yes, and I will sing praises to the Lord. He is in a joyful set of mind. He wants to lift up joyful praises to God, David does, and he's got people surrounding him left and right in front of him and back of him. They're all His enemies are all around, but yet he lifts up a joy of praise to God. May I say this, uh, what, what, just, just this last thing, may I say this, that God inhabits the praises of his people, that he knows that what gives him joy is to see his children finding joy in his presence. So if we can stay within the presence of God, we'll find joy that we never even imagined. That's what I have to say about that, Pastor Josh. Now, uh, I was as you were, as you were talking here. Let me, let me just read this. I want to give you a reference, and you probably know if I say it. He yeah. who dwells in the shelter of the Most High shall abide under the, shadow, under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Mm -hmm. That's what you were speaking to. Psalm mm -hmm. 91, yes. verse 1 and yes. 2. Yes. The refuge of God, the pavilion of God. Mm -hmm. And in today's day and age, this is a this was written. David was a was a military man, so he wrote in 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 terminology of military mil, mil, military fortress uh, strongholds things like that. Today we have that as well. We can still speak to that coming to God, getting getting under the authority of God, getting under the liberty of God, and bring bringing freedom. That's just like saying going into the into the pavilion of God, going into the refuge of God. It's the same kind of thing, but it's just different terminology. So there's nothing different about what we say today or how we communicate it today. It's just a different terminology for the time we're living. God still calls for us. And what I see in this is that we are to call upon God. What does it say? It says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all this righteousness and all these things will be added to you. He wasn't talking about, in my studies of that scripture years ago and even in here recently, he wasn't talking about material things. He wasn't talking about, if I want that car, I got to pray and God will give it to me. You got plenty of TV preachers that say that stuff. Well, I don't need to be another one of them saying it. God, God, isn't, God isn't talking about material things. He's talking about, seek ye first the kingdom of God. And if you're seeking the kingdom of God, you understand the will of God. If you're seeking his kingdom, 
So you're going to, you are more apt to pray for what the will of God is in your life more than what your wants are and your desires are. Cause there's a lot of difference in, in what we want and what God's will is. There's a lot of difference in that. And so if we are, if we are seeking God first and putting ourselves into that place of liberty and that place of freedom in that refuge place, if we're seeking God in that going to God, we're not going to be praying for things that we know we don't need or we know we don't that God doesn't want us to have. We're going to be praying for the will of God in our life. And the will of God sometimes is things that we don't want to do. You know, if 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 you're a person watching this and, and maybe you struggle with being an outgoing person, maybe, you know, you're a Christian, but you've never come to the place of sharing your faith with just someone you know, God telling you, you know, share your, share your faith with this person and you get, you get sheepish and you kind of back, back away from it because it's not who you are. But if you seek God for his will, the will of God is that his word go forth. And the will of God is that if you are the instrument he wants to use, the will of God is for you to, to be used. And so I think in, in, and in my ministry, Shannon, you've, you've known me for a long time in my ministry. I'm one for shaking off the comfort zones and going beyond it. I'm one for for pushing the envelope in God in order to grow in God. Because that's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to be growing. We're supposed to be um, ministering. We're supposed to be bringing forth the word of God. And so he's saying here, seek God in all things. He's seeking God. Verse 4, one thing. One thing I have asked from the Lord that I will seek after that 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 will I seek after for me to dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. If you're seeking after God, you want to be with God. You know, if you're not seeking after God, you're living for yourself. What's going to happen is you're going to you're going to desire the things of the world. You're not going to want to be with God because you don't want to give up what you what you've got going on. If you seek god you'll want to be with him because i know and shannon knows and if you're a christian you know that when you seek god and that liberty and that freedom takes hold of you so to speak doesn't grab it doesn't grab you and you lose control but it it envelops you that's a better word you can you can feel the freedom you can feel the the dispensation of all the fear and, and all that stuff that just falls off when you're in the presence of God. You can feel that. And so you want that. I want that more than I want my own my own desires. You know, I would love to be able to have a $20 bill always appear in my wallet if I needed money. You know, pull a $20 bill out, $20 back in there. I would love that. But that's my want. That's my desire. That's not what God wants for me. And so I have to understand that if I'm seeking after God, I, I, I should know. I should know the will of God. I, I know that's not the will of God to give me magic money. I know that's not the will of God. That was just kind of an illustration. But understand that if I'm seeking after God, I am. I I know what the will of God is, and if I'm truly seeking after God, I'm not going to pray for anything but the will of God in my life. And then knowing that, He will walk with me through that situation in my life, is something that is is a blessing. It's 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 a it's a knowledge of knowing that God is with you, that can do more for you than the fear. And the anxiety, and just the just uh, fear of rejection. A lot of people that don't speak out out about a lot. A lot of that is a fear of rejection. We're 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 afraid of being rejected. You know, getting told to shut up or getting the door slammed on our face, in our face. Hopefully not on your face, but in your face. Okay, but understand that's a fear. That's a real fear. That's a real fear. fear. Fear of rejection is a real fear. And that's what causes people to not want to share their faith. And the enemy uses that by saying things like, well, you're not, you're not cut out for that. You don't even know how to speak right. You don't, you can't, you haven't studied long enough to be able to share your faith. Okay. We have great examples of that look at Moses. Moses stuttered or Moses had some kind of impediment in the speech, but God still used him. He used Aaron to help him, but God still used him. 
You see, so the enemy, what, it, what the enemy, whatever the enemy throws at you, listen, get into your Bible. God shows you. God shows you the the opposite. God uses those. God God uses people that can't speak right. God gave Job back everything that he lost because he trusted. Time after time after time, if we trust and seek after God, we see in the scriptures that God honors that. And he's not done. It's not done with the end of the book. God's still doing it. God's still honoring his his people who choose to follow him. God still heals people. God still moves. God still gives the Holy Spirit through the baptism of the Holy Spirit, through the, through the evidence of speaking in tongues. God still gives those things. It's not done just because the end of the book is here or is not done just because Jesus ascended. God still does these things. God still ministers through these things. And we need to know that. We need to understand that. We need to trust in that. Seek after that. And if you truly do that, you'll see it. You'll 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 see it. God will reveal it to you. God will reveal it to you. Verse seven. Oh, hear, oh, hear, O oh Lord, when I cry with my voice. Be gracious to me and answer me. When you said, "Seek my face," my heart said to you, "Your face, Lord, I will seek." Do we have a heart like that? Do you have a heart like that? You go before God and God says, just spend some time with me. Do you do that? God's done that with me a few times. You know, I, I find myself in a, in a turmoil spiritually. And we all go through that. All Christians go through that from time to time. You find yourself in a, in a spiritual turmoil and you're seeking after God and you kind of are, for me anyway, I was kind of like half-heartedly praying to try to just ease my anxiety. And God just spoke to my heart in a still small voice. Just spend time with me. And so I did. And guess what? God dispelled that, dispelled that anxiety. God dispelled all that fear. God's I didn't do it through my own mustering up a prayer. God did it. God answered it. Seek my face. And he said, you seek my face. And I said, I will. And when you said, seek my face, my heart said to you, your face, I will seek. Answer God. Do what he says. See, this is where I always talk about, Shannon, this is where I always talk about where the rubber meets the road of your walk. Because if God says to do something, do we do it? You know, uh, if God says to change something, to start something or to stop something, do we really do it? Do we really do those things? And I think that's important that when we, go through life that we uh, understand that we have to apply those things in order to really take take and and get something out of out of our relationship with God we have to apply those things David applied it here seek after me and said your face I will see so he's so he's he, he's he's applying the change what a great example what a great example So, Amen. Yeah. So verse seven uh, says that uh, you want to you want to go on to verse nine, verse seven, verse eight. You want to go on to verse nine, or you want to you got you got some more thoughts on that? Uh, actually, I I can read through verse uh, I can read verses nine through. Um, let's see. I believe it's I believe it's eleven or twelve. Um, I had some thoughts on I had some thoughts on verse eleven. But uh, let's go ahead and read 9 through uh, 12. Uh, okay. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. You have been my help. Do not leave me nor forsake me, O God of my salvation. When my father and my mother forsook me, the, the, then the Lord will take care of me. Verse 11, teach me your way, O Lord. And lead me in a smooth path because of my enemies. Do not deliver, deliver me to the will of my adversaries. For false witnesses have risen up against me and such as breathe out violence. You know, um, I, I read 
over and over again in this psalm, and you'll see it throughout the psalms. Actually, you'll see it throughout the whole Bible. It's speaking of salvation. He says again and again, David does, but God says to us again and again, I am your hope. I am your salvation. Here, David's just telling him again. In verse 9, he says, do not leave me nor forsake me, O God of my salvation. He's just reminding God. And let me just put this little plug in there that God loves to be reminded of his word. He loves to be, he loves to be reminded that he put his son on a cross for our salvation, that God himself went to the cross for our salvation. So I just love the fact that again and again, David speaks of the salvation of God. Whether a mother or a father would forsake them, it says, God says, he, David knows, God, you will never forsake me. No matter who's coming against me, whether my, my family come against me, whether those in this world would come against me, God, I know you're right there. You're my salvation and your face I will look to because you're not going to forsake me. We've all been forsaken by someone. I almost guarantee it. But but the Lord, he will work in and through that. He, he gives us what we need. There and then in verse 11, it says, teach me your way, O Lord, and lead me in a smooth path because of my enemies. I just want to draw what I drew out of that. And so many pastors have told me before, you need to have a teachable spirit. If you keep a teachable spirit within you, that not just learning from the Lord, that is, that's the best place to learn from his word and from him speaking into your heart and things like that, but also be able to be teachable by others. You know, we all have some people that are, that are our mentors that we look to uh, for a good sound advice. What we talked about last week, we need to find people of good wisdom, of good character, of, uh, of godly discernment. So um, we need to be teachable. All of us need to be teachable. We don't need to think everything that we think is right, because most times it's honestly probably not. So when I start thinking that I know everything, that's my clue to be getting some advice from some brothers and sisters or more, more than anyone from God to go to that secret place that we talked about and find out what it is. Don't think too highly of yourself to not get advice from others. And it just says it right here that uh, he says, teach me your ways, O Lord. I want to learn your ways. Take all my ways and throw them out the door. I want to learn your ways, O God. So that's what I, I gathered out of verse 11. And some of the, you know, the, this, this to me between like verses uh, 5, maybe through uh, 12, or I'm sorry, 7 through 12, it's, it's like a, a prayer and a praise at the same time. He's praying to God, but yet he's praising him at the same time. And that can be that very thing for each and every one of us, Pastor Josh. Our mm -hmm. prayers need to be praised. As a matter of fact, if I have ever, was, have I ever learned anything, the first thing I need to do is praise God before when I start praying. Don't start asking him for everything. I mean, he knows your heart already, but give him glory and honor and uh, shout joys of praise to him like uh, uh, that David talked about in here earlier. He will listen and he will guide you if you keep that teachable spirit. And you know, one of the things that I really enjoy about this, about this psalm, but also about this section is if you look at Dave's, David's life, almost called him Dave like he was like he was a friend or something. But David's life, you know, if, if you look at his life, he was a little spindly little kid out in the field that God made a king, you know, lifted him up, you know, and just through time and time again, just kept just kept exalting David to new things. And David could have been, well, look at me. I was out in the field. Now I'm now I'm king. Well, I must be something. But no, he realizes, he recognizes that he needs to be teachable. David, David was a mighty man. He, he, I mean, you know, he killed Goliath. You know, there was a lot, there could have been a lot of pride in that. 
Saul killed thousands. David killed his tens of thousands. There could have been a lot of pride in that. There could have been a lot of pride in, in the fact that he was out. He he was basically a shepherd boy, and then he's king, killing killing Goliath and and doing you know being a military giant of his day, boy. But he but he but he exalts himself, or he he doesn't exalt himself up beyond God. He leaves. He humbles himself to a point of being teachable. And I think for today's ministries, 2020, there's a lot of people who have a lot of big churches. There's a lot of ministries that have make a lot of money. And I hope and pray that these pastors and these these uh, television preachers that they have a teachable spirit. You know, God God uses His Word and prayer to teach us. He teaches us through his word and through times of prayer when, when we have to shut up, basically. And that's what I say. I tell people, just shut up and let God talk because that's basically what we have to do. But then God also confirms those things through other people. We're willing to hear from God, but sometimes we're not willing to hear from our friend or someone else in the church because they're not God, but God uses his people. There are three things we need to focus on when we're, in, when we're walking in, 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 in the spiritual life. God uses his word, his prayer, and his people. And you can't have a true relationship with God that's flowing if you, if you negate one of those things or two of those things or all of those things. And so we have to understand that God, God uses those things, and we have to be teachable. Just because I went to seminary, and we went to seminary, well, we, I'm calling it seminary, but it was you know, is global university, which I call seminary. We're not the end all be all because we studied in seminary. Maybe somebody down the road that never went to school, God's using that person. God's speaking to that person's life and speaking to that person about my life. I should be taking that into consideration saying, well, you didn't even go to school, so you have nothing to say. That's not a teachable spirit. That's not a teachable spirit at all. And, and I And I like how he says, Teach me your way, O Lord, and lead me in an upright path. David was this giant of a man, not physically, but a giant of a man militarily, uh, you know, and he's saying, teach me your way and lead me to an upright path. We need to be upright men. We need to be upright people. Teachable. Excuse me. Teachable people. God desires to teach us. Are we willing to learn? That's the question we've got to ask ourselves. And me personally, you personally, and the person watching, God wants to teach us. Are we willing to learn? He goes on and he says in verse, um, verse 12 through, I'll go ahead and read, finish it out. He says in verse 12, do not deliver me to the will of my enemies for false witness have risen have for false enemies for false witnesses have risen against me and they breathe out violence i believe i will see the goodness of the lord in the land of the living wait on the lord be strong and may your heart be stout wait on the lord that speaks volumes that last phrase he says it twice he says be strong that your heart may be stout. But he says, wait on the Lord. God speaks to us. Sometimes he shows us a little bit of the path. And we think, man, you know, God's going to give me that. We want God to give it to us now. We want God to give it to us tomorrow or yesterday. But God might say, wait. You know, I'm I'm drawn back to when when we had the boys. You know, we Amy and I were married in 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 2002, and I knew God wanted me to have children. God wanted us to have children. I knew that, and so we waited a year, and then we said, "Okay, God, we're ready to go." God didn't give us a child until 2012. Do you think Do you think I felt a little bit of God? What's going on? You wanted us to have kids, and now you're now. Sure, there was. But God kept saying, wait, wait on me, wait on the Lord. God's got a promise for each and every person that would follow him. God's got a promise for me. God's got a promise for you. God's got a promise for you watching. 
God might give it to you tomorrow, but if he doesn't, that promise is still valid. Whether he gives it to you tomorrow or 10 years ago, 10, 10, 10 years down the road, 20 years down the road, that promise is still good. There's no expiration date on the coupon, so to speak. If God speaks it to your heart, he will see it through fruition, but not in your time, in his time. Wait on the Lord. Be strong. Ephesians says, do all you can do to stand. That's, that's evidence of being strong. Stand. Stand spiritually. Stand emotionally. Stand physically. Stand spiritually. Amen. I, I just want to read uh, in the Bible that I have. It says a little bit more in verse 14. I'm going to go ahead and read it because it drew out some more to me as I was, as I was reading it. It says, wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he, which is the capital he, which is the Lord, which is Jesus, he shall strengthen your heart. And once again, like you said, it says, wait, I say, on the Lord. What I really drew out of this, uh, Pastor, was the fact that it, he says, my strength that does not come from me, my strength. I, I think David says in all his humanness, he goes, my strength will fail. At some point, my strength will fail that I can't physically do something. But God's strength never fails. Uh, our hearts will, just like you talked about with the boys, um, are they coming, Lord? Is it? Are, are we going to have children? Sure, all those thoughts, I'm sure, gathered in your mind, that was the enemy, you know, trying to detour you from what God had for uh, for you and your wife, those two boys. But God says in his strength, in his timing, he will take care of that. So are, you found yourself, I'm sure, going back to scriptures, Pastor Josh, and saying, I am going to stay grounded in this area. God told me that I was going to have children, and that's what he wants me to do. So I'm going to continue in believing that we are going to have children. So your strength didn't literally come from you. It came from the Lord and with the scriptures and the prayers and people maybe surrounding you in prayer, or however that may be. That's another thing I like to draw out of this is we need the strength and the prayers of our, of, of, of our, our, our brothers and sisters in Christ. We, got, we, we must have that to uh, further go the work of the Lord because sometimes it's just really, really difficult. But if we find our strength in God, our hearts won't be dismayed and we can continue to seek out God in his will and watch what he wants to do in our lives. We must wait upon the Lord. I, uh, Pastor Josh, I just want to put this out there. I, I, I don't understand about the children, but I do understand about ministry. My wife and I waited for, I know it was a better part of five or six years after we had received credentials and things like that. Lord, where are you sending us? Are you sending us to a church? Over and over again, we would seek the Lord and he would say, I want you in Clinton. Over and over and over. And then one day I was at a, at a youth convention and the Lord spoke to me and said, you're supposed to go on the mission field. Now, when that happened, I wasn't thinking anything about going to the missions field. My wife and I have had the heart for missions for years. But when the Lord spoke to me, we knew it was him. It didn't take very long. And the strength within me, I could tell was from God because for the next 40 minutes, while this person was talking, I had no control over uh, my, my emotions. I was crying. I was just listening to the Lord. Uh, I knew that God was strengthening my heart. And this was the ministry that God was setting us out to do for his goodwill. So I just want to say to anyone that's out there that ever thinks that God doesn't have something for them to do, wait upon the Lord and seek his face and someday you may just be surprised. He may send you on the mission field. He may send you to be a pastor. Uh, I, you spoke to the fact that we need to be, you know, we both spoke to the fact that we need to be teachable. Let me tell you, there's a lot of people in Africa that can teach you a lot because, you know, I don't, we don't know a lot about Africa. We could study it all we want, but until you have feet, uh, 
boots on the ground, you don't really understand what you're uh, up against. But there's a lot out here that you could learn from the people. And not not, not maybe a one of them have had one um, class, you know, but they know the word of God. And that's the best class of all is to know the word of God. So with now, that, can you, now, can you, can you, do you remember when you told me, you called me up and you told me about yes. that? Yes. You remember what you remember what I told you to do? Yeah, I've got it written down. Wrote November fourth, two thousand seventeen, Pastor Josh. I told you write it down. Yep. And I told you put it somewhere you always see it. Right. You know why? And because, I did because that's speaking of my own experience of dealing with ten years of waiting on children. Yeah. Because so many people would say, "Well, maybe you didn't hear right from God. Maybe you're supposed to adopt." Maybe, maybe you need to, maybe you need to think about in vitro fertilization. Maybe you need to, no. And I said, write it down. I think I said, put it on your fridge or wherever you look the most, because you're going to have looky loose and you're going to have people going to say, well, you know, you're not really cut out for that. You know, you didn't really hear from God or we need you over here, you know, to be, to stay here to help with this. That's why I told you to do that because God, if you believed God spoke it to you, and I believe you did, and I believe God spoke it to you, you you needed a physical representation of that of that teachable moment because you're going to have people that are going to say, "Hey, you know what? You didn't hear right. You know what? God, God was it was all emotional. It was all you know. You've been speaking about you've been you've been thinking about missions field, and and this is all emotional, and you got caught up in the emotions." No, it was from God. And I said, write it down, and put it somewhere you always see it because you're going to have that. And it works. It works. Good advice. You, you, you can attest to that, I think, that that works. Absolutely. Because, because God, when, when God speaks, God, God, you know it's God. If you're a believer in God, you, and, and when he speaks to you, you know it's God. You know it's, or you should know it's God, I should say. And when he speaks, you know it's God. You need to write it down. Put it somewhere. Journal. And, that, and, and yep, and that's journal, not just, journal, journal. <laughs> and that's not just for and then and that's not just for for calls to ministry or calls to the mission field, or whatever. But that's even things like if you have like we talked about earlier, depression, anxiety. God will speak to you things in the Psalms that like what we're talking about here. Write that stuff down because the enemy is going to come back to you and say, "Oh, you didn't hear from God. You need to be you. You need to be continuing to be. You didn't hear from God." Well, you know, baloney. I got it right here. This is what God said to me in this moment. That's why when I said when I said I was dealing with stuff and God just said, "Spend time with me," and I did that, and all that dispelled. I didn't. Excuse me. I didn't write that down, but I did. I do remember it very vol very vividly, you know, that God spoke that to me. And I did that. So right now, uh, we're about an hour and four minutes in, folks. You've been sitting around here for, for an hour and four minutes. So well, it'll be split in half. Uh is there anything you'd like to add in, in closing, Shannon? Before we go, I wanted to go ahead and lift that up to you if you wanted to do that. And then if you don't, you we can just go ahead and 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 give some encouraging words and pray, and then we can go ahead and and uh, end for this week. Okay, Pastor Josh. I just want everyone to remember your salvation is found in the Lord. And there's no other in which we need to look to for salvation. No one in this world, our moms, our dads, our brothers, our sisters, even those in Christ, they are not our salvation. They may lead us to the one that can give us that salvation, and that is Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. We need to always remember that he is ready for us to come to him. At any time, day or night, whether you're getting woke up in the middle of the night and you feel like the end of the world's coming, understand that Jesus is waiting to listen to what you have to say. He never sleeps nor he slumbers. He is with you in all your ways. So with that, Pastor Josh, I just want people to realize that we're here for them. I know Pastor Josh puts up a number every, um, every time we do one of these to make sure if you have something that you need prayed for or some uh, that you want uh, 
you want you want to know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You can do that right now. You don't have to be in the church to do it. We could lead you to Jesus Christ right now. It would be it'd be it would be our greatest joy. It'd be well uh, it'd be the best part of this hour and five minutes ever because God has brought someone to His kingdom. So with that, I'll just pray, Pastor Josh, and uh, then I'll let you close, brother. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this opportunity to do this walk through the Psalms, Lord. It's been so encouraging to hear you even speaking to us, O oh God, through your word. Father, over and over again, you show us your love, your salvation, Lord, that is only found in Jesus Christ, your son, who went uh, that lived, that died, that went to the cross, and that rose again so that we may be with him in heaven one day. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus, if there is anyone listening to this and that they need to uh, come to you, Lord, that you would reach into their hearts, Lord, that your Holy Spirit would woo them to you, Father, and that they would give their lives over unto you, Lord. Now, Father, I ask in the name of Jesus, if anybody needs healing, if they're hurting, Father, physically, if they're hurting mental, mentally, Lord, if their soul is even hurting, Lord, I pray, Father, that in the name of Jesus, you will touch their lives today, O oh God. For, Father, you can do far more than any of these words that we've ever spoke to. Lord, you can reach right into a person's soul and take care of them and wash them with the cleansing blood of Jesus Christ. Father, I thank you for this opportunity to have this time with Pastor Josh. And I pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, you just watch over each and every person uh, in our families and those that are listening, Lord. I pray that they will get as much out of this as we have gotten from you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Now, understand, I, 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 you see a message or you see a number here at the bottom of the screen. For those that are listening on the podcast, the audio version, the number is 815-348-9629. Again, that number, 815-348-9629. That is my podcast message center, prayer center. You won't get me as me physically, but you will get a message that you can leave your prayer request. Understand that that prayer request stays with me personally. And if you would like it to be shared for other people to pray, please say that you want it public. If you don't want it, make it public. Just don't say anything and it'll stay with me personally. And I will pray with you and uh, I will pray for you and pray that God minister to you. That number again, 815 Three four eight nine six two nine. I just want to say thank you to all of you who are joining us today. God bless you. I enjoy doing these things. I enjoy getting together and then speaking of the Word of God into into not only my life and into Shannon's life and ministering to each other, but ministering to you and allowing God to minister to you through His Word. I just want to encourage you if you want to listen to this on the podcast, go to Anchor.fm. There you can go to any other. Google Podcasts or Spotify or anything like that. You can go to any of those things and type in Stepping Stones of Faith. The podcast will be there. If you want to uh, go to the YouTube channel, you can do that. Type in Stepping Stones of Faith on YouTube. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel, like the videos, and share them on all your media platforms that God could be glorified around the globe. Amen. So for Shannon Bale, I'm Pastor Josh. Thank you for joining us today, and we will see you next time. God bless you. I want to leave you with a blessing. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May he turn his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. So next, until next time, Shannon and I will bid you goodbye and we'll see you then. Bye-bye.